Amen. Let the church say amen. amen. Woo, man, we are here another night, another night of praise, and we just thank God for um, our song service. Let's welcome the presence of the Lord in this place through a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we ask for the Holy Spirit. Give us your grace and your glory as we go into your word and as we have this meeting tonight in Jesus name. Amen and amen. We want to let you know that we have the next six Bible studies available for you tonight. And Sister Gloria in the back, you see it right there? Those are the six Bible studies. And we're going to give that to you. And then on Monday, we're going to give you the final set for the rest of next week. And this is what we're going to do. We're going to meet tomorrow night. We're going to meet Monday night. And after Monday night, we're not going to meet no more until the following Monday, okay, in terms of the evening meetings. And then what we're going to do is on Sabbath, we'll be having our church service here, our Sabbath school at 930, and then our divine service at, now don't pass it out right now, don't pass it out right now, um, and our divine service at 10, 1045 a.m. And for those that were here was Elder Mason the Blessing. Amen. Yes, Amen. indeed. Brothers and sisters, we're going to be bringing um, power pack speakers here every month, and we're going to have a wonderful time in Jesus' name. And tonight, we're going to talk about going to heaven. Amen? Amen. We're going to talk about going to heaven, and we're going to focus on Revelation 21 and 22. And then what we're going to do is we're going to have a good night's sleep tonight, and then come back tomorrow to have our meeting. Amen. And so what we're going to do is we're going to ask for Sister Daphne to come up and sing us two songs, and then we'll get into the word. things stay right. I don't know about the rest of you all, but I sure enjoyed that song service. Amen. Wasn't that a blessing? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. This first one says something good is going to happen to you. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Something good is going to happen to each of us if we receive it. Right there in the dust he sat by the gate to listen for footsteps and patiently wait. The blind man didn't dream that this was the day that Jesus of Nazareth would pass by his way. She stood by the well so tired and alone. Misfortune and heartache were all she had known. She looked at the stranger, but who would have ever think twas Jesus of Nazareth who would give her living water to drink? All right, this microphone's gonna get me. My friend, if you're listening, now to me, this is the moment that you can be free. This very same Jesus is right here today. Release your faith and touch him today. Something good is going to happen to you, happen to you this very day. Something good is going to happen to you. Jesus of Nazareth is passing your way. <coughs> Jesus of Nazareth is passing 
is passing your way. Okay. This next one is it pays to serve Jesus. Um, sometimes when we're doing the Lord's work, um, it may feel like it doesn't pay very much, but ultimately it pays. It truly pays to serve Jesus. Amen. The service of Jesus, true pleasure affords. In him there is joy without an alloy. Tis heaven to trust him and rest on his words. It pays to serve Jesus each day. It pays to serve Jesus. It pays every day. It pays every step of the way. Though the pathway to glory may sometimes grow dreary, you'll be happy each step of the way. It pays to serve Jesus, whatever may be tied. It pays to be true, whatever you may do. Tis riches and mercy in him to abide. It pays to serve Jesus each day. It pays to serve Jesus. It pays every day, it pays every step of the way. Though the pathway to glory may sometimes grow cheer, you'll be happy each step of the way. Though sometimes the shadows may hang o'er the way, and sorrows may come to beckon us home, our precious Redeemer each toil will repay. It pays to serve Jesus each day. It pays to serve Jesus. It pays every day. It pays every step of the way. And though the pathway to glory, oh, sometimes grow tree, you'll be happy. say amen again. Amen. amen. Well, we want to get right into the word of God. Tonight we study, we want to cover Revelation chapter 21 as we come to the close of the book of Revelation. And brothers and sisters, the good, the end is always the best part. Amen. All the drama is in between, but nevertheless, at the end, you will see that Jesus wins. Shall we bow our heads for a word of prayer? Father, and heaven, we ask for the Holy Spirit to abide with us and send forth your grace in your power. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. In the book of Revelation, the 20th chapter, starting at verse 11, we see the great judgment day when all will be stand before, all will stand before the throne.
we see where all will stand before the throne. And brothers and sisters, the Bible makes it very plain that nobody's getting away with anything. The Bible says in verse 11, and I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it, from whose face the heaven and the earth fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. Brothers and sisters, you need to understand that everything that we do is being recorded in heaven. Do you understand this? And when it's being recorded, um, God, is, God is doing this for truth and righteousness sake. And we want to make sure that nothing that we have done evil will be held against us in the books of heaven. What we want to do is we want to obey the truth and follow the truth for this time. Amen? Amen. The Bible says in verse 13, and the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell or death in the grave delivered up the dead which were in it. And the Bible says, and they were judged every man according to their works. Understand this right here. Every single one of you that's been given the everybody, everybody in this room, including myself, at one time or another in our lives have been given the opportunity to know what is true so that we can follow him. And sad to say, there'll be many people on judgment day that heard the truth, had the truth right there, but for some reason chose not to follow him. And brothers and sisters, they are not going to make it. Do you understand this? But there will be many that found the way of salvation. They found the truth just in time before all hell breaks loose. And brothers and sisters, they will make it. The Bible says in verse 14, in death and hell, were cast into the lake of fire. This is the wet death tsunami. Second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. The focal point of the book of Revelation, as Jesus has revealed it to his church, is to tell us the things which must shortly come to pass. From Revelation chapter 4 all the way to chapter 18, you see a whole bunch of drama going on in the world, a whole bunch of drama going on in the church. And we, in Revelations chapters 13 through 18, give the focal point, which applies to us in these last days. And in the end of time, as we get ready to come into that time, we see that there is a new world order goal, one world government, one world leader, one world religion, and one world currency. And all these things are coming to pass, even as we are speaking right now. And God has to send a warning message Warning against going along with it. Do you understand this? That is why it is dangerous to not follow the truth when God gives it to you. Because brothers and sisters, if we're not going to follow the truth now, then we're not going to follow it when all this stuff breaks loose. The Bible talks about these seven last plagues that will come upon humanity. Seven of the most terrible scourges that will ever fall upon mankind. And it will be too late to repent, too late to change, because human probation will impose on humanity. The day is going to come when the last sermons are going to be preached. The last offer for repentance will be given. And brothers and sisters, God is going to pour out his judgment without mercy on those who have despised it. And then, of course, on judgment day, they'll be cast to the lake of fire, which the Bible calls the second death. And the Bible says there should be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This means that every single one of us needs to search ourselves and say, Lord, am I following you all the way? Because brothers and sisters, if God takes one sin to heaven, he would have to take the devil back. Do you understand this right here? Let me say that one more time. If God takes us to heaven with one sin and unrepentant, he would have to take the devil back and all the angels. And God is going to have a universe clean and free from sin. Do you understand this? And so God has sent the message of revelation to all those who are willing to listen. And if you think it breaks my heart, it breaks God's heart to where people still won't listen. They still won't obey. But brothers and sisters, it's going to be a scary day when people won't think that they are saved when God's going to have to convince them that they're not. Do you understand this? And God's going to allow the, their lives to flash before their eyes and God is going to show them all the times when they were given an opportunity to repent of their sins, to change their ways, and then they're going to be cast into hell. But I thank God that God is going to have a people that's going to be faithful to him. Amen. Amen. And brothers and sisters, going to heaven is worth it. The purpose of doing this meeting is for heavenly purposes. Do you understand this right here? We all want to go to heaven, 
but understand the way to heaven is a straight and narrow gate, which means that there has to be some sacrifice. And brothers and sisters, I am confident that all of you here are willing to make any sacrifice in order to be in harmony with God. What do you say out there? So God is going to destroy this earth and hell, and then God is going to do something special. Let's go to the book of Revelation chapter 21. We're just going to look at the whole chapter. Our study tonight is Revelation chapter 21. And to tomorrow, our study is Revelation chapter 22. And we're going to look at what the Bible says. The Bible says in verse 1, And I saw a new heaven and a new what, somebody? Earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more what, somebody? See, the reason why there is no more a new heaven and a, a first heaven and the first earth is because the fire that came down from heaven to the earth to where the lake of fire was powerful enough to destroy the whole earth to where the first heavens were passed away. The first earth was passed away and the fire was so hot that all the seven seas were completely humiliated. And I've flown over the Atlantic Ocean. I've flown over the Pacific. And let me tell you, this is a big planet. This planet is going to be big enough to fit all those who have chosen to love Jesus. And God is going to make this planet all over again. Amen. Look at verse um, 2. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. This is the kingdom of God that's going to come to this earth to where the New Jerusalem, the heavenly city, the New Jerusalem is going to leave from heaven and it's going to come down and the, the earth will be the capital of the New Jerusalem for the ceaseless ages of eternity. Do you understand this, Raider? And this is the goal that we all must strive for because the devil's going to try to keep many away from it. But brothers and sisters, if you would just persevere, if you give your life to Christ, walk in obedience to his commandments, brothers and sisters, nothing shall stop you from entering into heaven. Amen. The Bible says in verse three, and I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with him, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be with be there who is by God. So God is going to live on planet Earth for eternity. So God's going to leave heaven, and he's going to make his headquarters on planet Earth, brothers and sisters. Oh, what love to where God will condescend and be a part of our living experience for the ceaseless ages of eternity. And all we got to do is accept the gift that God has offered. The Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. By receiving eternal life, brothers and sisters, we receive the principles that God will do to where eternity is guaranteed to every single person. And the Bible says that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. We thank God for that. And so God is going to destroy this earth. He's going to destroy sinners. And let me tell you this, it's going to be a sad day to where he's going to have to throw. Do you think it hurts when people see the truth and don't follow it? It's going to hurt when a whole human race that chose to follow their own ways rather than God's ways will have to perish. It's really going to hurt when to see all these people that heard the truth about the mark of the beast and not to receive it, still receive it anyway. Do you understand this? It's going to hurt his heart. It's going to hurt my heart to see possible family members and other people to where they rejected Jesus and rejected his truth. A couple of several months back, I went to Honduras, Central America, and I found one of my family members from the Brooks family. And they told me about a cousin in um, Idaho. And I was like, what is he doing? And what is a black man doing in Idaho? But he was preaching the gospel there. And I found out and I got a chance to talk to him. His name was Hans. And we talked, and we've been talking almost every week from um, this, from that, from May all the way to last month. But he told me, you know, he was in the hospital and he needed some help. And I gave him some herbs to help him with his kidney problems and things were improving. But um, he had some complications from dialysis and he has been in and out of the hospital for the last several months. And then I got a phone call this week that my cousin died. And I just, just when we met and he had asked me for the truth and I mailed him a great controversy and some other stuff about the change of the Sabbath to him. And brother is very sincere. So and I, my, my cousin loved the Lord, but he passed away this week from cancer. And, you know, the sad thing about death is, is that you never get a chance to say goodbye. But I believe that he followed all the light that he knew 
and that by the grace of God, he's going to be in heaven with Jesus. And I'm looking forward to seeing my family in heaven. Do you understand this? So I just thank God for getting a chance to meet him. And it's just so sad. I never got a chance to meet him in person, but we talked many to quite a number of times. And, you know, when my cousin said that he had died, I said, oh, man. What could I have said? But you know, he had made this decision for Jesus, and I thank God for that. And so we thank God for that. And so when Jesus comes back, we're going to be reunited with all of our loved ones who gave their hearts to Jesus. Do you understand this? And we're going to live forever. Amen. And it's interesting. Nobody wants to die. Everybody wants to stay young. Everybody wants to do all this stuff to, to give longevity. And as Martin Luther King says, longevity does have its place. But brothers and sisters, let me tell you this. All we got to do is just um, get your passport for heaven. Do you understand this right here? Which is the blood of the lamb, Jesus Christ. The Bible says in verse four, and God shall wipe away all tears. Why? Because it's going to be a lot of crying on that day. He's going to wipe away how many tears? All tears from their eyes. But God says, and he promises something, that there should be no more what, somebody? Death. Neither sorrow nor crying. Neither shall there be any more what somebody pain for all the former things are what somebody passed away. All the stuff that we go through on this earth that causes turmoil and trouble, God promises that all these things are going to pass away. Amen. And we're going to live forever with Jesus. But look at verse five. The Bible says, And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things what somebody. New. So he's going to make everything new. He's going to recreate this planet. And God is going to have beings that loved him more than life itself. Amen. They're going to love him more than tradition. They're going to love him more than anything. And they're going to live with him forever. You know, this life is nothing more than a test. It's really a testing, right? Everybody's being tested to see whether we would be loyal to the principles that govern heaven. And brothers and sisters, everybody has their test. And God tests us on every point. I'm never going to forget years ago, I was in Chicago. It was 20 years ago, I was in Chicago doing an evangelistic crusade with a friend of mine. And we were tag teaming and we were preaching the same stuff. And then, you know, me and my Bible work friend, we went to this person's house and I decided to stay in the car while my friend dealt with it. They was in the hospital for about a while. And then... The lady came out and said, Pastor Isaac, can you help me with so-and-so? She knows that she needs to take her stand for the truth, but she just won't do it. So I went in the house, and this is what I told them. I said, my sister, I'm not going to argue with you, but this is your life. I wrote down a piece of paper. Just use your imagination. I wrote down a piece of paper, and I put a point on there, and I put a B. And I said, on this day, you were born, whatever you, you were born. You were born, you became an infant, a toddler, a child, an adolescent, this happened, that happened, and then you got married, you had kids. I was just doing that time, I was drawing a line across the paper. And then, of course, you had children, and then you gave your life to Christ. So at certain points, I was putting um, dots there, showing that certain things had happened. And then one day, you heard the truth that you hear in this meeting, and I put an S for the sad truth, because she had already given her life to Christ, but she would be cheated to come higher. And so I put an S there, and I said, my sister, God is giving you this truth for you to come up higher. And then I had to just bring it on home. And then I put one line that went up and one line that went down. I put H for hell and other H for heaven. Do you understand this right here? And I said, my sister, Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commandments. And your decision today on this truth is going to determine which way you're going to go. Do you understand this right here? Now, I wasn't saying that salvation was in the Sabbath, nothing like that. But what happens is, is that when God gives you truth, do you understand this? If you sin willfully, the Bible says, after that you have received the knowledge of truth, they were made of no more sacrifice for sins. And I just made those things plain to her. And I said, you need to think about this. And I walked out. Five minutes later, my friend came to the car and said, she's getting baptized. Praise God. She made a decision to go all the way. And I said, what, was the, what made her do that? That lady was boo and crushed. She went to the pastor right here. You got to understand that when God brings you to a certain um, light, understand this right here. Things are going to have to change. Things are going to change 
regardless of what decision you're going to make. Do you understand this? If I would have rejected Jesus at the age of 17, brothers and sisters, things would have changed for my life. Had I rejected the truth that I heard that you're hearing right now at the age of 18, my whole life, God would allow me to go on with my life. And if I would have died from repentance, I would have been lost. You know why? Because the books of heaven would have said, on this day and this time, so and so heard the truth, but they rejected it. Do you understand this right here? And the reason why I'm preaching like this is because like with Lot, like God told, and those angels told Lot to get out of Sodom, but he lingered. Do you understand this? And God is telling somebody, come out of Babylon, keep all the commandments of God, but people are lingering. Because you know why? Their feet are stuck in cement. And what happens is, it's one thing to where you want to get out and you can't, but you got some folk who are just comfortable where they are. And brothers and sisters, on the last day of the earth's history, of the time of Lot of Noah, I'm pretty sure Noah got up and said, look here, I'm about to close this door. And you need to make your stand. You need to come into the ark. And brothers and sisters, I'm sure those people, thousands of people, maybe millions, were looking at each other and saying, should I go, should I not go? And somebody probably, well, he would probably say, well, if the rain comes, then we'll get on board. I can see people trying to go up to the front to get in the ark and somebody holding them back. Do you understand, Mr. Ian? And what happened was the door was shut for seven days. But when that rain began to fall, people then realized that, man, Noah was really telling the truth. And were knocking on the door saying, Noah, 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 let us in. But you know what Noah said? He said, I can't open it because I'm not the one that shut it. Do you understand this right here? And let me tell you this, the door of opportunity is closing for somebody tonight. Do you understand this? I'm just going to keep it real with you. God has given people, and there are people who know the truth. Do you understand this? But people think that, oh, I can just do something different. But brothers and sisters, we're going to realize how strict God is on Judgment Day. God told Adam and Eve, do not eat that forbidden fruit under no circumstances, but they were deceived into doing it. Am I right, somebody? And if people could do it deliberately like Adam did and be deceived the way Eve did, then brothers and sisters, I know that people can rationalize their way out of hearing truth, even though they claim to believe the Bible. Some of you have heard the Bible in a way you have never heard it before. And you wouldn't keep coming out if you didn't believe it. If you believe that was a false Bible, do you understand this right here? So I have to assume that you believe that you're hearing the truth. And what does Jesus say? Walk in the light while you have the light. You can understand this. Lest darkness come upon you. God says, I'm going to make everything new. This is important for everybody. And let me tell you this. No sacrifice is no greater sacrifice than when a woman gets married to where she sacrifices her maiden name for her husband's name. Do you understand this right here? Do you understand this? And no sacrifice is greater when a when a man decides to no longer be single, but to get married. Do you understand this? It calls for sacrifice. But if you're in love with the person that you are getting married to, then no sacrifice is too great. Do you understand this right here? LeBron James, one of the greatest basketball players of today, puts a million dollars a year into his body. I mean, a million dollars. I mean, I need a million dollars. Do you understand this? into his body so he can be in tip-top shape. People are doing this for an earthquake. They're not scared to spend money, do you understand this, and spend the time that is needed, but it's necessary in order for him to excel. Brothers and sisters, God is calling for somebody to sacrifice something. Nobody who goes to heaven will go to heaven without making the sacrifice. Do you understand this? Really? Now, we're going to make some big sacrifices. If one day somebody in this room, you may have to sacrifice your life for the truth. But if you won't live for it, you definitely won't die for it. But God says, behold, I make all things new. Behold, verse five, and he said unto me, right, for these words are faithful and what somebody. True. You know, a lot of people want to believe the Bible was written by uninspired men and that this and that and that and this, but the day is going to come. Every scoffer of the Bible will realize that the Bible really was the word of God and it's going to be too late. Do you understand this? Every question of truth and error in this great controversy is soon to be settled. And the sad thing is, is that there are people who are going to realize the truth was really the truth. Only when it's too late. Look at verse six. And he said unto me, it is what somebody? One day God is going to say, it is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life. 
Praise the God is just saying, all I want to do is give you eternal life. And you know how many people are trying to find joy and pleasure in sin rather than in righteousness and mercy, brothers and sisters. And what happens is, is this, Jesus says, if you're going to follow me, you've got to take up your cross every day and follow me. Do you understand this? And it don't make any sense. The worst, you know, angels are amazed. Who, who is amazed? Angels are amazed when people don't give their life to Jesus. They're like, how in the world can people, knowing the heaven that they have to gain, can choose to serve somebody else other than Christ? Have mercy. It doesn't make any sense. But God gives us a promise in verse 7. He that was somebody overcometh shall inherit how many things? If you will overcome all these hurdles that Satan throws at you, if you will overcome the temptations of sin in this life, the Bible says that you shall inherit how many things? Everything. And I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But look at verse 8. But the fearful, the unbelieving, the abominable, and the murderers, and the whoremongers, and the sorcerers, and idolaters, and how many liars? All liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the wet death somebody. Brothers and sisters, understand this right here. You can choose to live any life that you want. There are people who have been raised in the church. You know the way of righteousness. And it was the, the most unwise thing that a lot of young people are doing is, is that when they get to age, they leave God and go out into the world. That is dumb because not only do they rob themselves, they rob God of the glory that he wanted to use their lives. Do you understand this? Yeah, it's pleasure and sin now, but it's only for a season. Do you understand this right here? And we're going to have to deny ourselves. So all these Christians that claim that I was out for 30 years and all that kind of stuff, what they're telling you, they were dumb. But we think that that's the best testimony. And if the person that grew up doing righteousness all their lives, that's boring. Brothers and sisters, it is better to live your life for God than to go out. There's one thing to be raised out in the world and come to Jesus. There's one thing to be raised in the church and then go out there thinking and the devil deceives you that you can come back at any time. Do you understand this? Brothers and sisters, everybody that reads does not come back. Do you understand this? That's why it's never best to leave God. Do you understand this? There are people that have told me, um, the people who said, I'm coming back, but they have never come back. Do you understand this? See, we realize, see, I realize the seriousness and the spiritual warfare that it, that being a pastor, being an evangelist, that um, preaching does because people have good intentions to do the right thing. But once you start going in a path, the devil will make it hard for you to do what's right. Do you understand this? He just, that's just his job. He's, that's his job. So what happens is, is that God gives a category of sinners that are going to be cats and they will look at verse eight again. Number one, he said, the fearful, but what's somebody fearful? There are people who are fearful of taking a stand to follow the truth because it causes people to get mad at you or whatever. You're going to lose this. You're going to lose that. But understand this right here. You may lose everything in this life, but if you lose everything for his sake, you shall gain it back in glory. The fearful, the unbelieving, those who choose not to believe the truth when the truth comes. Do you understand this? And there are people that, even though the truth is clear, refuse to believe. They don't want to believe. You know why? Because if I believe the truth, that means I got to change. Do you understand this? So the fearful, the unbelieving, the abominable, there are people who want to continue to practice certain lifestyles. Do you understand this right here? And they'd rather burn in hell than to give up abominable lifestyles. Do you understand this right here? The Bible says, and the uh, murderers. Now, you know, murdering is definitely a, a, a kind of sin, but you got people that take pride, pride in the fact that they serve in six licenses for murder, have mercy. And they have all that time to repent, but a lot of murderers will die in jail, unrepentant, have mercy. And the whoremongers, brothers and sisters, people whoring around. You got people saying it's my, uh, my, my hot summer, my 20 hot summer or whatever, to where they feel like just being a hoe and just bang -a and all that is where it's at. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you this right here. If there's anybody here sexually active, it's time for you to repent, period. Or you're going to go to hell, period. He is not your husband. She is not your wife. 
Do you understand this? You, you, you have crossed that line, you repent, you ask God to forgive you, but what happens is this right here, God is not playing around with whoremongering. Do you understand this? Then he says, as sorcerers, those who mess with witchcraft, idolaters, those who put anything above the God of heaven. Do you understand this right here? And how many liars? All liars shall have part in the lake which burn up with fire and brimstone. God has to put a line here. And when you read this verse in the book of Revelation, the Holy Spirit will impress you the character that you must have in order to be ready for heaven. Do you understand this reading? Because God's city is more beautiful than this picture right here. And the question is, are you willing to make every sacrifice necessary to get there? Do you understand this? The Bible says in verse nine, now the Bible in the next several verses talks about the beauty of the city. Let's look at it. And there came unto me one of the seven angels which had the seven vows, full of the seven last plagues and talk with me saying, come hither, I will show unto thee the bride, the lamb's wife, talking about the heavenly city. And he carried me away, verse 10, in the spirit into a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem descending from heaven, from God. Having the glory of God, have mercy, and her light was light unto the unto a stone most precious, even like unto a jasper stone, clear as what crystal. And the wall, and it had a wall great and high, and it had how many gates? There's only twelve gates into the city, and at the gates twelve angels, and the names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel, brothers and sisters. God says that your name will be written in heaven. Do you understand this? If you take a stand for the truth that he has given you, do you understand this? To where, isn't it wonderful to see your name engraved? You know, you got a lot of pit basketball players that their names are in the Hall of Fame, whether it's in basketball or whatever sport. When I was in Hollywood last year, I was walking down um, the pathway and you saw all these names of people. Do you understand this? It's something psychologically exhilarating to see your name engraved. But while I was at Hollywood, there was a lady that came to me, a very innocent, and this lady was a very innocent white lady. I mean, when I say she was innocent, she looked like she was just right from a, from just innocent as innocent can be. And she came to me and said, um, can I ask you a question? I said, what is it? She said, do you uh, watch movies? I said, no. And then she said, do you watch dirty movies? I looked at her like, no. She wanted to show me some stuff, and I just blushed her. And then, right, and I have to not see two men, each other like man and male and female. I have mercy. These people need Jesus. You understand? The bad you all watch dirty movies. What kind of question is that? She don't know why. Sort of rebuked her and stuff like that. I don't want to let nothing like that to keep me away from heaven. Do you understand this? So what does the Bible say? It says in verse 13, it says, and on the east, there was how many gates? Three gates. On the north, three gates. On the south, three gates. And on the west, how many gates? And the wall of the city had how many foundations? Twelve foundations, and in them the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. But there's an apostle whose name is missing, and his name is Judas. Am I right, somebody? Judas is going to stand outside and see the one that replaced him, all because he sold Jesus out for 30 pieces of silver. Am I right? And he's going to look at that silver and say, you mean to tell me I gave up this, my name engraving in heaven, for 30 pieces of silver? Brothers and sisters, I'm here to tell you, people are selling themselves out for less than that. Rather than follow the truth, they will sell themselves out. But what does the Bible say? In verse um, 15, and he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city and the gates thereof and the wall thereof. And the city lieth four square and the length is as large as the breadth. And he measured the city with the reed, 12,000 furlongs, the length and the breadth and the height of it are equal. Make a long story short, it's 375 miles one way. It's like driving from here to New Orleans, Louisiana. That's about five right here. But it's like a 375-mile trip just on one side. That's how big the city's going to be. 375 on one, 375 four sides around. Uh, it has been said that if the heavenly city could fit 
people if everybody had 100 square feet of space, the heavenly city could fit about 39 billion people. 39 billion. We have 8 billion. That's nearly five times the many people as we have right now. But you know, brothers and sisters, it ain't going to be 39 billion slaves saved. Do you understand? There's going to be plenty of room. Do you understand this? And Satan is trying to keep you from going here. Do you understand this? And look what the Bible says in verse uh, 17. And he measured the wall thereof, 144 cubits, according to the measure of the man that is of the angel. And the building of the wall of it was jasper. And the city was like unto what kind of gold? Pure gold, as clear as glass. You know, brothers and sisters, this is going to be a very beautiful city. And we're going to have to go through some tribulation in order to get there. You understand this with me? And God says, look, I want you here, but I got to tell you of all this drama that the devil's going to try to get you caught up into so you won't get here. So by knowing the issues, knowing what's getting ready to happen, we can make the right decisions so that we won't be left out. Amen? Amen. What does the Bible say? The Bible says in verse 19, and the foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones. The first foundation was of what, somebody? Jasper. The second was a sapphire. The third, a chalcedony. The fourth, an emerald. The fifth, a sardonyx. The sixth, a sardius. The seventh, a crystallite. The eighth, a beryl. The ninth, a topaz. The tenth, a chrysoprasus. The eleventh, a jacinth. The twelfth, a amos. And the twelve gates were, were 12 what? Pearls. These are the pearly gates. You hear me? And it says, and every several gate was a one pearl. And the street of the city was pure gold, as it were, transparent glass. Mm. Brothers and sisters, that's a beautiful city. Do you understand this? That city's been in existence as long before this earth was born, and it's going to look more modern than any modern city. You understand this right here? Exactly. And the Bible says, and the Bible says in verse 22, and I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon to shine in it. The moon and the sun will still be there, but the city was glorified so much with God's presence to where you won't need the sun or the moon. For the glory of God did lighten it. And the Lamb, hallelujah, Jesus is the light thereof. And the nations of them which are what, somebody? Say, verse 24, shall walk in the light of it. And the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. And the gates of this city shall not be shut at all by when? Day is going to be open 24 hours, seven days a week. Amen? Okay. And then the Bible says, for there shall no night be there. It's going to shine so bright. It's going to be like Alaska. For those who've ever been to Alaska, at a certain time, the sun is up for practically almost 24 hours. It's just daytime all the time. Have mercy. But notice what the Bible says in verse 26, and they shall bring the glory and the honor of the nations into it. But verse 27 is a fearful warning for everybody in this room, and there shall in no wise enter into it anything that does what somebody, any defiling habits, any defiling speech, no defiling songs will be sung in heaven. Do you understand this? Right? We're not going to be talking about making love and you not married. Do you understand this? Right? Those defiling music will be not be allowed in heaven. The Bible says there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever work of abomination. Brothers and sisters, all these people want all these rights and stuff to love what they want to love. I'm more of a friend to them than the government is because the government is disqualifying them because no LGBT practices will be done in heaven. Do you understand this? Neither any abomination that the Bible says. God says, in no wise it shall not enter in. This city is too holy for anything abominable to come in. And the greatest abomination in the Bible was sun worship. Am I right, somebody? Am I right? No, no Sunday worship in heaven. That's the honor of the sun God, the creature rather than the creator. Then it says, neither or maketh a lie. You hear that? Nor maketh a what? But they which are written 
in the Lamb's Book of Life. Brothers and sisters, understand this. And let me sit down and talk to you. We are lied to all the time. Everything's a lie. I, I'm a, almost everything's a lie. We've been lied to about how to deal. We've been lied to, just trust me, on a lot of things. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Do you understand, Mr. Hill? We've been saying one more time, we've been lied to on a lot of things. Politicians have lied. Medical doctors have lied. You caught that brother in the lies when he said years ago that you don't have to um, get no jab. All you got to do is just know that the, 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 the virus is your protection. Now, if he's a medical doctor and he knows that, then why is it years later he changes his story and then tries to say people took him out of context? Brothers and sisters, we were lied to. And people were deceived into thinking that I need to go get it. Am I right? And all you keep hearing all the time is people dropping dead. I wonder why. Al Roker, for those who watch him, some of you have been watching Al Roker for years, was in the hospital for blood clots. I wonder why. Because that stuff causes it. But nobody, but you can't say nothing about it. Because Big Brother, Big State going to take you down, right? We've been lied to a lot on a whole bunch of stuff. We've been lied to about what life is all about. People are being lied to and trying to tell you that um, that same-sex marriage is just as legitimate as regular marriage. I remember Obama talked about same-sex marriage self strengthened families. He's a liar. A liar. Straight up, all us Black folk voted for him and stuff. They didn't care what he believed. He was a black man from the White House. And guess what? When he left, we inherited a big black mess. I'm not saying I'm not Republican, so long we don't get caught up to all that kind of stuff. But brother, we've been lied to a lot of stuff. We've been lied to by Santa Claus, <laughs> the Easter Bunny. And people have been lied to about Sunday worship. You understand this right here? See, before God takes people to heaven, all this stuff going to be straightened out. People are like, oh, okay. Thank God. So, brothers and sisters, I'm going to ask you a question. Whose side are you? Let me ask you a question again. Whose side are you? If you're on the side of truth, then the Bible says you got to walk in it. You know what, what you do will show. I don't have to say anything. I ain't got to judge no one. And you're going to realize why is it that he keeps saying the same thing over and over again? You know why? Because sin has so desensitized us mm -hmm. to where we almost feel like we don't have to change. But guess what? All of us, including myself, we always got to change. Do you understand this right here? I can't stay the same today as I was yesterday. Do you understand this? And if God is doing this for your own good. Do you understand this? Now, what we're going to do, um, now you can pass it out. We have the next three lessons out for our Bible Institute. And it's Sister Balak here. There are some people that need to get the first lessons. You may have to print some. But what happens is this right here. Um, and you can talk to Sister Balak at the back. But we have um, people passing out right now the um, flyers for the... Um, not flyers, excuse me. We have people passing out the studies for your Bible Institute, and this will cover you for a little bit. Now, what we're going to do on Monday, what day did I say? We're going to give you the rest so that throughout the whole Thanksgiving break, Thanksgiving holiday, you'll be able to get it done. And we're going to try and see if we can get these done within the next week and a half. And, and it's going to be you, God, and your Bible. Do you understand, Mr. Eden? And then what we're going to do is, is that we're going to get them all ready and completed. For those that complete them, we will have a graduation. We're trying to do this graduation on the 4th of December, not no later than the 5th. But if it has to go beyond that, we'll let you know. And what we want to do is this right here, just have something special. And we probably have it downstairs or whatever. I don't know how we're going to do it. but um, So what we need to do is we need you to have everything done. I'm going to tell you when we need, I need you to get it done. And when I give you these studies, I need you to get these done by December. Not this, is it December? Let's try to get all these done by 
December the 30th. Amen. And not December 30th, November 30th, excuse me. And what we're going to do is this. We're going to meet tomorrow. We're going to meet Monday. And then Tuesday, Wednesday, we'll take off because of Thanksgiving holiday. Thursday, Friday, we'll begin the Thanksgiving weekend. And then we'll come back for church on Sabbath here at this Legacy Center. And then what happens is on Sunday, there'll be no meeting because people will be coming back. We'll be starting back our studies back on the 28th of November. And then we'll just do Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Amen. And then we're going to just go into a new series on the sanctuary. And we're going to um, close out the year with some good stuff. And brothers and sisters, um, as you can see that we, we not, this is not going to end. Do you understand this, baby? We will continue, but we're going to give you some lights off. And I need some lights off because I am tired. But then again, you know, I'm tired before I come when I get on the pulpit right here. I got all this energy. Amen. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Amen. And brothers and sisters, let me tell you this right here. The stuff that we're covering is only scratching the surface. Do you understand this? We're only scratching the surface when it comes to this. And if you have finished your studies, you can turn these in. So what we want you to do is this right here. Now, if you finish all these lessons by Monday, you can turn it in on Monday. But if you haven't, that's okay. We'll give you all the lessons. We're going to give you everything else on Monday so that we're going to have everything done by the 30th of November so we can grade these and get you graduated from here. Amen. Amen. And so uh, I'm excited, brothers and sisters. How about you? Amen. Amen. Is there anyone who didn't get a study? Yes. Amen. All right, make sure that when you turn everything in, you have to turn it in with your name on there. Because if you turn it in without your name, then we don't know who did it. You understand this? But brothers and sisters, we're going to um, continue to study. We're going to continue to do what the Lord says. And then what we want you to do is we want you to invite somebody tomorrow who has never heard this before. Is tonight your first night, sister? How did you find out about this meeting? Online? Wow. You saw it on Facebook? Um, on YouTube? Wow. Amen. Oh, a few weeks. Oh, you, so you've been following this already. Amen. We need to talk to you after this. See, you see how good this is? Amen. You know, see, we can't think about ourselves when it comes to this. We got to think about people like my sister here. Will you be blessed tonight? Well, you need to come tomorrow night. Amen. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring blessing over each and every one of you. We're going to see you tomorrow night at what time, somebody? Seven o'clock. Amen. Let's all stand for closing prayer. Mm -hmm. Father in heaven, we come before you in prayer. In the name of Jesus, we want to ask that you would send your spirit, the spirit of your son, into this room. We want to pray that you'll bless every single person, Lord, who has heard the truth tonight to come back tomorrow night. And tomorrow night, let's bring a friend, Lord. I hate the fact that Thanksgiving is coming because we're going to be gone for almost a week. But Lord, we want to pray that you'll cause that week to be good and go by fast and so we can come back so we can talk some more about you. So give us the same traveling mercies as we go to bed and give us your grace and your glory. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Consider yourselves dismissed. And we'll see you tomorrow at 7. Second.